Hello everyone. Today we're going to speak about the different kinds of insulins that exist in the market. We're going to start with the long-acting insulins and these are the insulins that usually last 24 hours. Some of them can last a little bit less than that and some of the newer um, long-acting insulins can last up to 42 hours. Long-acting insulins are generally taken at night and we see the effect of them early in the morning, what we call a fasting blood sugar. So if your blood sugar in the morning is higher than 130 for three days in a row, that means that your long-acting insulin at night needs to be adjusted. It means that your long-acting insulin is not sufficient. And on the opposite end, if the blood sugar in the morning is lower than 80, it means that your um, long-acting insulin is a little bit too strong and that you may need to uh, adjust your insulin by decreasing it at the evening. These types of insulins generally do not cause a low blood sugar episode. Um, your blood sugar in the morning fasting should be anywhere between 80 and 130 if you have diabetes and this is considered a normal blood sugar level for someone who has diabetes. The most common types of long-acting insulins are these ones. This is insulin levomir or insulin detamir, basaglar, which is a quick pen, and the generic version is Glargine, and Lantus Solostar, which is also insulin Glargine. Each one of these pens has 100 units of insulin per ml, so they're called U100 insulins. And each pen holds three milliliters of insulin, so it means that each of the U100 pens holds 300 units of insulin in total. There are also long-acting insulins, which are concentrated insulins. And one example of that is insulin Traceba. Insulin Traceba, also known as insulin Declodec, is a long-acting insulin. And it comes in both U100 concentrations and U200 concentrations. The U100 means that there is 100 units per ml, and each pen has three mLs, so there's 300 units in that pen. However, if the Traceba is U200, it means there's 200 units per mL, and each pen is three mLs, so there's 600 units in that one pen. Another long-acting insulin that is concentrated is insulin to JO. Insulin to JO is insulin glargine, and it comes in two different um, pen sizes. It comes in 1.5 ml pen and a 3 ml pen. The 1.5 ml pen, because it's a U300 concentration, will have 450 units per pen, and the 3 ml pen, because also it's a U300 concentration, it will have 900 units per that pen, because each um, ML has 300 units, so you would just multiply that by either 1.5 or 3. There are also rapid-acting insulins, which are insulins that are taken before meals, generally between 15 and 30 minutes before a meal, and they help us lower the blood sugar while we're eating, or if we have a high blood sugar, it helps us bring it down very quickly. These types of insulins, they start working within 15 to 30 minutes, they peak around two hours, and they're out of our system by four hours. These insulins, because they work very, very quickly, they have a potential of causing a low blood sugar episode, or what we call a hypoglycemia. Rapid-acting insulins are different than short-acting insulins in their onset, their peak, and their duration. The one way that you can distinguish between them is that the rapid-acting insulins end in AUG, meaning Novolog, Humalog, whereas the short-acting insulins end in LIN. So Humalin or Novolin R would be the regular insulins, which are considered short-acting insulins. Examples of rapid-acting insulins include Novolog Flexpen, which is insulin aspart. Humalog Quick Pen, which is insulin Lispro, Admalog Solo Star, which is also insulin Lispro, 
And there's also a Pedra, which is insulin glue lysine, for which I don't unfortunately have a demo pen. And there's also insulin Fiasp, which is fast acting insulin aspart. Um, and that one actually works much quicker than the rapid acting insulins with an onset of about two to five minutes. From the rapid acting insulins, there is only one that is concentrated and this is the Humalog. So Humalog Quick Pen is the only concentrated rapid acting insulin and it is at U200 concentration. There is also another special category of insulins called mixed insulins in which um, one pen contains both uh, intermediate acting insulin and either a rapid or a short acting insulin. One of those examples that I have is the Novalog Mix 7030. So this is a mixture of NPH insulin and of a rapid acting insulin, Novalog. And how do I know this? It's because it says Novalog Mix. If it said Novalin Mix, it means there's Novalin, which will be um, a regular insulin instead of the analog. Now, um, the 7030 mix, it, um, it is telling me that 70% of this insulin is NPH insulin and 30% of the insulin is either the rapid or the short acting, depending on the name. One thing to keep in mind for this insulin is that this insulin is cloudy, as you can see. It is not clear. So it does not mean that this um, pen is bad, that you cannot use it. However, you can see the separation between the um, white part, the cloudy part, and the clear part on the top. And this is because it's not been mixed. It's very important that before you use your mixed insulin to mix it by um, inverting it about 20 times to make sure that the insulin inside is properly mixed. I also tell patients to just rub it between the palms of their hands about 10 minutes, uh, 10 times, to make sure that this um, is well mixed. So when it's well mixed, it should look something like this, like a uniform cloudy color. This means that the, both of the insulins are well mixed and that you can inject. This type of insulin um, generally is injected two times a day, once in the morning before breakfast and once in the evening before dinner time. It can cause more hypoglycemia than a rapid acting insulin on its own, so it's generally recommended to have a snack in between your meals to prevent the slow blood sugar episode. And um, this type of insulin is generally cheaper than um, the newer insulins, so a lot of people who have financial difficulties might want to consider this type of insulin if they're doing um, basal bolus regimen.